All right, so YouTube is no stranger to criticism when it comes to the music industry and its ongoing search for why it's not making more money, uh, the music industry, that is. Uh, today, Google released a PDF they titled How Google Fights Piracy, where the company detailed in no small part, I mean, it's a huge document, uh, how effective its content ID system has been. Uh, and basically, content ID, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it started back in 2007. Basically, content owners could sign up with YouTube and choose from three methods. So, it, you know, they would upload their content to YouTube, and that would be then, from that point on, matched to any content that was then uploaded to YouTube. Content owner could be notified about it, uh, it yeah, or choose to have it instantly removed if there was an infringing video, or be paid for infringing, uh, for the infringed matched content. YouTube says that it's paid $2 billion with content ID since 2007. That's up from $1 billion in 2014. So accelerated a lot. Is that a, is that a sign, do you think, Ron, that, that this is working? What do you think? I, I think so. I, I, yeah, I, th I think this entire system, I think the content ID system is great. I think what Google and YouTube have done with it have, have, have has, uh, created a way to solve for the problem uh, because basically if I just go and upload a, a an album to YouTube, which we've seen people do quite a bit in the All past the couple of years, mm -hmm. um, now the 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 owner of that music gets paid. So the content doesn't. Back in the day, remember years ago, if you uploaded something that had con that copyrighted music, it, they would take it down. But now, and they've, but not like it's something brand new. But now we've seen, you know, like we mentioned, ninety percent of uh, content owners who signed up for it choose to don't just leave the content there, but pay us our share. Right. I think that's a great meet in the middle solution. And the fact that in the past two years they've paid out nearly two, uh, nearly one billion dollars, um, just in two years alone, shows the com the combination of one a that it's working, and b it's one of those natural, you know, nature finds a way kind of things where users are using YouTube to listen. To to music and to share music that was never the intended point of youtube uh and google has i think has done a great job to kind of respond to it for some reason the music industry cannot get away from themselves they just ever going back to mp3s and napster 15 years ago they cannot st they're stumbling through this mess of digital you know of, of the future and causing problems left and right. And you've got Taylor Swift and Paul McCartney and all these people, you know, I'm sure, you know, Paul McCartney is really concerned about this, but their people are concerned <laughs> right. about it. Um, you know, and, and signing these petitions, demanding that Google pay more as if it's up to Google to pay them to recover the money they lost 15 years ago by screwing up digital distribution. Uh, the real problem here is, is, is not the, I, I, and I feel for the artists, don't get me wrong. I am very artist uh, friendly. I have lots of friends who are musicians. I have lots of friends who are in touring bands. Uh, if, and I strongly urge the audience, if you go see a band, buy a T-shirt. That's the only way they make money on tour. Mm -hmm. um, buy merch, please. It's true. But um, the, the problem isn't – I don't think the problem is Google and YouTube, nor is the problem the artist. The problem are the middlemen. The problem are ASCAP. The problem is BMI. The problem is the record labels, all the people in the middle – because what's happening is that the artists are saying, I'm not getting my money from my music being up on YouTube, but YouTube is paying that money out. It's that filter that's going through where that artist then gets pennies because of all the crap deals that have been, that have been made. Yeah, it's an interesting situation for the, the, the relationship between YouTube and the music industry because yep. in some ways it's, it's very necessary. Whether the music industry wants their music or you know their their content on youtube or not people are going there to find it <laughs> and yeah. uh and it's possible for them to find it content id actually makes it uh possible to get paid for the stuff that they didn't explicitly put up there i guess then the question is you know and the question that critics have regularly is am i getting getting paid enough for this content are you facilitating it is it a convenient thing to hide behind as they say the dmca uh, because you know that this this kind of content attracts viewers and you make a lot more money than we end up getting when you kick it down. But the, but they're not hiding. I mean, that, that, the, the, the people who say that the YouTube and Google is hiding behind the DMCA have a 
patent misunderstanding of what the DMCA means. Right. You know, like, and the DMCA is 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 a, a horrible piece of legislation that has caused numerous problems, and and I'm not a fan of it alone. But I don't think YouTube is is hiding behind it. They're doing their best to work with it. You know, users can upload, you know, it brings up the whole question of safe harbor and, you know, and am I allowed to upload an album to YouTube and is that safe harbor and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, they're building the tools to allow people to get paid. And unfortunately, it then becomes a game of whack-a-mole where, you know, record labels need to have somebody whose job is to sit there on YouTube searching for their artists to see if stuff has been uploaded and claiming it. But, uh, you know, and YouTube is doing a lot of automation, which no, none of these are mentioning the fact that there's a lot of auto detecting and uh, really kind of smart technology behind the scenes that is allowing that content matching to occur. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, it, it's it's just the, the DMCA just makes things even murkier. And again, I think it's just the, the, the music industry looking for some sort of reparations for past mistakes. Yeah, and I mean, that's another thing that the critics, um, you know, call or, or kind of point out is like, okay, sure, you've got content ID and sure it's doing all this stuff, but it's not doing it well enough because we still have to hire, you know, staff to go in and manually kind of search for content that's infringing, remove it, you know, yeah. make sure that it gets removed. And the second it gets removed, it just ends up getting, uh, getting or claim, or claim, but but the, the solution is to claim it and then just make the money off of it. I mean, sure. which I think is a great, which is a great middleman solution. The thing about this story and why this is interesting, um, you know, we we were talking before the show started. We talked about this three weeks ago on this week in Google because um, that was when the artists kind of came out with their petition and their open letter saying YouTube, we want more money and stuff like that. So this is YouTube's response to that, mm -hmm. and YouTube in this document has given specific data, yep. specific numbers, which the music industry has yet to be able to do. Mm -hmm. The music industry has not been able to quantify their claim or their issue with, with Google, YouTube, or the DMCA of how much they're losing or whatever the issues are because they're trapped in these horrible contracts. And and we hear the stories. I mean, the, the uh, one, of, one of my favorite bands, Squeeze, re-recorded their entire catalog to put up on Spotify themselves because they weren't making any money from the original recordings of those albums. That's awesome. Right? I mean, and bands are doing that left I mean, and it's right. unfortunate like, that they had to do that, but that's awesome yeah. that they did that. <laughs> right, yeah, and, and they're not alone. There are numerous other bands that are taking that route because the Spotify deal and the, you know, now audio has gone, but like the other, you know, Google Play Music, yeah. uh, the other, the, the way those digital distribution deals are, the artists are getting little, getting pennies, if that. Uh, on plays, whereas they should be getting the lion's share of it. And meanwhile, Sony keeps cashing Google's checks. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and there's also kind of the question, a little bit of, of what we've been talking about here, the fact that Spotify last year paid $1.8 billion. YouTube paid $740 million. And the the reason for, you know, a, at least a part of the reason is because the, the models are different, right? And Spotify and other music services, you're you're getting paid per stream, all that sort of stuff. Well, YouTube, uh, you know, Google in general, it's an ad revenue basis. And so the question is, you know, so they're calling for YouTube to kind of match the amounts that they're getting on these other services. But it's, but it's basically the other services are kind of lodged into this old way of thinking, like the pre-internet way of running the music business, uh, the music industry and, rev and generating revenues. Uh, Google and, and YouTube kind of represents the new way. So which one's right? Which one's the right I, way? Because they're, they're very different numbers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, compare you know, comparing the numbers between Spotify and YouTube are like a movie studio complaining that they didn't get as much money on TV as they did in the box office. Mm -hmm. Like they're just completely different platforms, and they work completely differently, and they're not apples to apples, unfortunately. I'm sure the music industry wants them to be as simplified as possible and and, and all on one common platform. But like you said, Spotify is a per stream model, is a subscription aspect in there. There are all these you know kind of nuances to the deals, and similarly on YouTube, the Content's got to be identified. It's got to be linked. It's got to be, you know, claimed and all that sort of stuff. And yes, stuff slipped through the cracks. But I'm sorry, is $740 million last year not enough money? That's a lot of money. You know, $1 billion over two years, that, that is Google making a concerted effort to get the money into the hands of those artists. And I don't think anybody can blame them for, for not trying to do that or hiding behind anything. It's $2 billion. You know yeah. the pro the problem is is the problem is that we all know how much Google and YouTube is worth and how much they you know they make and whatnot and they, so this is just these are ambulance chasers these are right. people they, they just they just want more money because they've already been losing money saying okay we can go after their deep pockets.
Yeah, it's an interesting Silly. way to put it, and ambulance yeah. chasers. But I think you're mm. absolutely right. Well, we'll see if the music industry does the same and being revealing. I don't think it's going to happen. No. Uh, if, if anything, the music industry, the, the one thing you can set your clock by the music industry in that the record labels will do everything they can to screw everybody they work with. <laughs> pretty <laughs> so much. It's, yeah. yeah. History yeah. is proven. History is proven. Yeah, exactly.